Today we're going to build an isometric room inside of Blender, inspired by Sophie's head shop from the movie Howl's Moving Castle. Building isometric rooms is really fun and in this video I will show you all the basics that you will need to know to get started with building one of your own. So let's first start with setting up our scene. If you don't want to do this every time, I've created a free starter file for building isometric rooms that you can download on my Ko-Fi page. Anyways, for starters we're going to change our camera's resolution to a value which will result in a square image. I went with 2000 pixels by 2000. Once you have done that, let's go to the camera settings tab and change the lens type from perspective to orthographic. This will give our image the isometric look that we're going for. Let's scale up our cube by pressing S and dragging our mouse until the edges of the cube almost touch the borders of our camera view. Also make sure that the Z rotation of your camera is set to 45 degrees. Now let's go into edit mode by pressing tab and let's select the vertices in the middle of our screen. Then delete it by pressing X delete vertices and now we have created the basic shape of our room. But as you can see it's a little thin so let's add a solidify modifier to it. We're going to do this by going back into object mode and adding one in the modifiers tab. Let's enable even thickness and change the thickness value. Once you're happy, let's also add a bevel modifier. Turn up the amount of segments and change the width value to get a nice beveled look. If your objects don't seem to bevel well, try pressing Ctrl A, apply the scale transformation and then try to bevel them again. This should normally fix the problem. And congratulations, we've now finished setting up our scene. So we can start with the fun part, blocking out our room. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a window inside of a wall. To do this, I will add a new cube to our scene by pressing Shift A and selecting cube. Then I will go into the walls modifiers panel and add a new boolean modifier. Make sure that the boolean type is set to difference and let's select the object as our newly added cube. If we would now place the cube inside of a wall, it cuts a hole in the wall and this will be where we will place our window. To actually see the boolean in action, let's change the viewport display mode of our cube to wire. Now let's start building out our scene. We're going to add modifiers to basically every single object that we add to our scene. The main modifiers that we're going to add are the bevel modifiers. This will make sure that our objects don't have sharp edges but are a little bit rounded. Besides that, we can also add a subdivision surface modifier to a cube. If we would then go into edit mode and select that we can only change the faces and not every single vertice, you can see that we can easily create various different shapes and objects. This method is basically what we're going to use to create more complex objects for in our scene. Finally, we're also going to add array modifiers to specific objects that we want to duplicate in a straight line. For example, the drawers in our cabinets, but also for the floor planks. Simply create a single floor plank object and add an array modifier to it. Change the offset scale and change the array amount. You can also stack multiple array modifiers on top of each other like this. And finally, we can use this to create our floor. Instead of bringing in image textures, I wanted to make all the materials for the objects myself right inside of Blender. For the wood grain material, I went to the shader editor and I added a wave texture and a color ramp. Normally the wave texture is in black and white, so by adding a color ramp and changing the colors, we can choose which color we want the normal plank to be and which color we want our wood grain to be. If you want to create curved objects such as flower handles or the hot vapor from the coffee that you see here, you will need to add a Bezier curve. In the curve properties, scale the radius of the curve and fill the tops. Now in edit mode, you can rotate and scale the points of the curve to get the shape that you want. You can also subdivide the curve if you want to create more complex shapes. For the hot vapor curves, I used path curves instead of bezier curve, but they basically work the same way. I also scale down the top and bottom points of the vapor curves by selecting them and pressing Alt S. To create light rays in your room, you will need to add a cube with a principal volume node. 
Normally to get a nice result with volumetrics in your scene, you will need to turn up your sample amount very high. But let's cheat a little bit. Let's go in our principal volume material settings and let's ever so slightly turn up the emission amount and let's change the emissions color. By doing this, you're basically recreating the sun ray effect that normally your lights would create in volumetric, but now you can keep your sample amount low. As for lighting in a scene, I added one big area light with a power of 150 that shines from above our room. I also added a slightly rotated sun with a power of 4 and its color changed to something a little more pink. Above the little lamp on the cabinet, I also added a small area light with a power of 20 and its color changed to something yellow. And finally, behind the window I added a normal plane with a normal material. But I turned up its emission strength to 30 and changed its emission color to something more yellowish. This combined gave me the look I was going for, that you can see right here. I hope that this video was helpful to someone and if you still have any questions, feel free to place them in the comments below and I will try to answer every single one. Good luck with your renders everyone, bye.